the manor of Popler takes its name from its native trees. Due to its locality, it quickly became the home of London's primary docks, including the large East and West India sites. Fish Market opens 4 till 8.30 a.m. Tuesday to Saturday to display the largest selection of fish and seafood in the country, forcing you to make the choice between a bargain or a lay-in. Since 1400, Billingsgate Market sold all sorts until Parliament gave them the right to concentrate solely on fish except eels, which were reserved for sale from the fishermen who fed Londoners during the Great Fire in 1666. Eventually, the eel ban was lifted. Billingsgate moved away from the city. Their new rent to Tower Hamlets Council is one fish a year. As normal, the Lord Mayor of the city recently handed over a dead salmon to the council's vice chairman as annual rent. George Orwell worked in there, as did the Cray Twins. Michael Caine just about swerved it for a career in Hollywood. This traffic light tree in the centre of the roundabout is an art piece by artist Pierre Vivant. You can imagine the confusion it causes for those passing through for the first time. Around 50 AD, the Romans began to establish a settlement called Londinium as a port built around the River Thames. Over time, Saxons, Normans and Tudors developed it to serve sea-related industries like warehousing, shipbuilding and rope making. The India docks of Poplar held the most important role in this primary life of London as a port. Blackwall takes its name from a long riverside wall curving the Thames perimeter to help mitigate flooding. Try and guess what the colour of the wall was. The Blackwall Basin was constructed and opened in 1802 to provide greater control over water levels and to reduce silting. It was the most critical point of the original dock system and the first non-tidal dock entrance basin ever built. It's an enormous entrance lock. For example, a number of ships could be locked into the basin at high tide, stay afloat when the tide receded and proceed into the docks when convenient without changing the water level inside the docks. This district has four Docklands Light railway stations, Blackwall, All Saints, Langdon and Poplar itself as an interchange for half of the lines on the DLR network, making it very busy. It also serves as a depot, and over half the driverless DLR fleet are stored and maintained there. Blackwall Tunnel is actually a pair of road tunnels routing traffic underneath the River Thames from the southeast to East London. The guy who masterminded London's sewage system, Joseph Bazalgette, helped with its early design phase. The tunnel was originally a single bore when it opened in 1897, and you could walk, cycle or go through by horse. By the 30s, it was already struggling with capacity. A second bore finally opened in 1967. They then used the two bores to divide north and southbound traffic.
We cover a lot of brutalist structures in this series and these buildings are some of the most iconic. Both of these housing blocks on the Brownfield estate are designed by none other than Erno Goldfinger. They are of course Grade 2 listed together with their big brother Balfron Tower where Goldfinger lived for a while. Their design and construction have proved to be of better quality than a lot of the other post-war high-rise blocks and visitors flock there during the annual open house weekend. After designing Balfron, Goldfinger identified all possible improvements and poured them first into Carradale House and then further in Trellick Tower over in West London. They feature large south-facing balconies allowing plenty of natural light and decorated with natural wood panels on the sides. As with all Goldfinger designs, the robust nature of the detailing has helped them to weather the passage of time. Crisp Street Market on the Lansbury Estate was designed by Frederick Gibberb and built as part of the Festival of Britain in 1951 as the first purpose-built pedestrian shopping area in the United Kingdom. It features a prominent clock tower surrounded by shops, pubs, cafes, apartments and about 80 market stores. hosts a monthly street food event called Bite on the last Friday of each month. Although it has been a conservation area since 1997, controversial planning decisions were recently announced for radical redevelopment of it. Many long-standing traders there believe this is being forced upon them through managed decline since most of its ownership and the estate it sits on was transferred to a locally based housing association. The market is still very much alive though and is well served by both All Saints and Langdon Park DLR stations. An old tailor called Sir Montague Burton started selling garments in Poplar. If you bought a three-piece suit, a shirt and all the trimmings from Montague, it would be known as the Four Monty. Anytime you walk into a Burton on the high street, you can be reminded of this phrase. The saddest and worst tragedy of the First World War occurred on the 13th of June 1917 when a fleet of German planes dropped a series of shrapnel bombs. One bomb made a direct hit on a primary school, skiving through the roof to the ground floor where it exploded. 18 infants were killed and 37 were injured. The disaster struck the hearts of the whole country. They were between 4 and 6 years old. To get a glimpse of how Poplar would have looked in the past, take a look at the TV series called The Midwife. It mostly depicts the day-to-day -day lives of the midwives and those in their local neighbourhood of Poplar, with certain historical events of the area having an effect to some degree on the characters and storylines. <laughs> 